Hey everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Coffee with the Critters, where I live stream every Sunday morning at 9.30 a.m. Eastern. For those that may be new, welcome. My name is Laura Joseph, owner of the Animal Behavior Center. We're an international educational center where we teach people all over the world how to empower animals and the people that care for them. And you can find out more about the work that we do on our website, theanimalbehaviorcenter.com. We use BF Skinner's Laws of Behavior, the Science of Behavior, using BF Skinner's Laws of Behavior on teaching people how to work with animals without the use of force. Uh, I focus on training exotics. And I do that because they're less resilient than domestic animals, and uh, you may be able to force them once. Um, I show how to use applied be behavior analysis using environmental events to control behavior, to shape behavior, teach new behavior, and empower the hell out of animals. Um, that is what I do. You can find out more on our website, or you can also email me at Lara. L-A-R-A -A at the Animal Behavior Center .com. Good morning, everybody. Happy Sunday. Um, so today I'm talking about topic uh, nails to tails. This is something that you, the viewers, have created to help me in my own behavior, using applied behavior analysis in my own behavior modification plan so I'm live streaming my work with animals, usually numerous times a day. If I'm not live streaming, I'm recording. Um, for those of you that are in our memberships, um, for those of you that are in our projects, those are all annual subscriptions, which you can subscribe to right there on our website under services. There you'll find our level one, level two, our projects. Um, which some of this I am going to show to you today. Um, but Nails to Tails, you guys came up with the name. I don't know if this was like a year, a year and a half ago. But what it is, is my phone is so packed full of photos and videos. And I'm horrible about at the end of the day, organizing them. They're all over my desktop. So what I've created with Nails to Tails was to show these clips of some of the things I'm working on, and then it causes me to have to file them. <laughs> um, so this is my own way of using ABA to control my own behavior. Uh, okay, so um, I've got a lot in store for you today, probably too much that I won't be able to get through in a half an hour. Good morning, everybody. Um, so before we get started, Pay attention to our events section. We have two upcoming workshops uh, this year. They're probably going to be our last two workshops of the year. We're already scheduling on workshops for next year. Um, the workshops are where you actually come to me, to the Animal Behavior Center, and learn from me, with me, standing right beside me. Uh, you will find those on our event section and those two workshops we have coming up. Um, the one is advanced animal training and problem solving. This one is going to be one of the first ones that I've ever offered to this magnitude where I don't usually allow people to work right beside me when I'm first starting to train an animal because I'm trying to observe and get a good grasp of what's going on. Um, I can't take a chance in people talking to me while I'm observing the animal because I may be missing some things. And when you're working with exotics, you want to not miss a thing. <laughs> you want to, because mistakes and accidents can happen. But this workshop, you are coming out right next to me and you are working with me on different species of animals that I'm currently working with, um, and you'll be doing the training as well. The second workshop we have coming up, we haven't had this one in several years. We're ready to get started on these again. This is the parrot enrichment workshop. Enrichment is what got me into the field of um, training animals. When I start, first started working with animals, uh, professionally, it was through enrichment, and I saw the power 
enrichment has in behavior modification plans, changing behavior, shaping new behavior, which we're going to be showing some work today and talking about. Um, so you can find, oh, I think I even put a link on here. Um, you can find out more about that in this link, which is coming right up. There it is. If you tap on that link, Therese, if you want to post that link, that would be great. So people could click on it and go right to it. That's also where you'll find the workshops for next year and the last two for this year. Okay, last slide before we dive into the training. Um, join our email newsletter list. If you are here this morning, you probably all received the email last night showing updates of training and enrichment I'm doing, um, talking about topics. I've got an article that's due here very soon that I need to start working on. <laughs> Um, so I've got a lot on my plate, but that's the way I work best. I'm great at multitasking in there. Therese showed the link of the upcoming events. Good morning, everybody. Welcome. So I'm going to start talking about um, and showing some photos and videos of different work that I'm working on currently, and I've even pulled some up from the past. Uh, this is what is littering my desktop now. But as of a half an hour ago, they're all filed where they need to be. Um, so I wanted to start off by talking about um, dill and chili, uh, two ring-tailed lemurs. This is sitting on my desktop, I think because I post posted it on my Facebook page earlier this week. Chili um, came to us. Um, it was chili was somebody's pet and surrendered to us over a year ago. And through getting him out in his enclosure, I noticed that he wasn't climbing, jumping anywhere near the level that Dill was. Dill is on the right, Chili is on the left. So this is how I use enrichment to start shaping behavior. And I was looking at Chili. I wanted him standing on his back legs because when an animal's standing on their back legs, it's causing them to focus on their back feet. And you'll see in this video, it's teaching him how to use his tail for balance and trying to figure out how to get the enrichment. So I stuck brows um, in this fire hose toy which was just out of his reach. And I used um, a swing. I like using swings when I'm trying to teach animals how to focus on balance. That's chili hanging on. There's dill getting ready to boot them off. So with lemurs in their troops, they're run by the female. Well, it's pretty much guided by the female. So dill, dill tells him where she wants him. And it's soon to be on the other underside of this fire hose. Um, but what I'm doing is we put this browse in there and then I'm watching. I want to make sure it's not too complex because taking too big a steps and shaping that behavior can actually positively punish the behavior you're trying to train. So I'm observing him. I'm not trying to help him. I'm observe, observing boo, to see if I'm taking too big of steps because I want the enrichment to be attainable. I want to have him work for it. And I'm also paying attention to the duration of time in which he's working for it um, to make sure that I'm not pushing that ratio strain. Um, so I did want to show this. Um, so that is the first video. And then you'll see earlier this week. So that was from last week. Earlier this week, I went in and watched, and this is what I saw. Bam. It's exactly what I wanted. Now I see him hanging by just one hand, and his body is hanging underneath. Now keep watching because Dill is on the right. She's getting ready to jump on there. And I'm watching the difference between the two hanging. Dill, which is very advanced, she's up at the top, 
and Chile's just barely hanging on below. So we still have some work we need to do, but I was very excited to see this. Um, all right, so the next one we have, um, I don't know if this is gonna show up. There's two videos on here that didn't weren't showing um, and that's okay because I have other ones that were more important that I did want you to see. So let's see if this will play. I don't see any option in playing. So let's, let's go ahead and skip that. I'm just going to boop remove that one. Um, so the next one I have up, and this one was in, this is important. Okay. This one's very important. So this, I just recorded a podcast for our memberships that I uploaded um, every month. I pick a topic and up and record an hour long in-depth podcast to go along with our live streaming memberships, our online memberships. Um, so depending on which membership you're in, I'm live streaming every week, every other week, um, incorporating activities, having you understand the science beha of behavior by putting it into explaining the terms, making, giving examples of this is how this would work with a dog, a pig, a penguin, a giraffe. Um, so in this one, we, our latest podcast in our memberships was called Behavior in Context. And this was still sitting on my desktop because I obviously was recently talking about it. But when the importance, what I'm talking about here and what I want to show in Behavior in Context is with you, when you first start, um, working with an animal and say you don't understand the species, you don't understand the individual. How do you know exactly what you're looking at? The animal is giving you behavior. Do you understand what you are seeing? What does this behavior mean? Am I moving too fast? Am I getting ready to positively punish my training um, that I, in, in the advancement that I've made up to this point? So what I'm getting ready to do with puzzles is I'm training him for a voluntary hoof trim. And before I can get to the hoof, how am I going to get to the hoof, if he, his hoof, if he doesn't understand what I'm asking of him? So, and we're talking about this in level two. Um, so many times, like when you're getting ready to harness train any type of animal, Right now I'm harness training a lemur and a bird. I don't start with the harness. That is taking too big of a step. If I just pull this object out, depending on the history of the animal, are they gonna understand what I'm asking? So in this video, before I get to Puzzle's hoof, I'm touching him, all right? This led to another fabulous live stream right after this one and see how he starts to quiver. And I'm like, what exactly does that mean? He's quivering and soon he starts quivering before, once he sees my hand starting to approach, he quivers. So learning and see that quiver, learning in context, meaning what else is happening in the environment at the same time, helps me better. When does this behavior happen? Is this happening in the environment at the same time? Now the environment's changed. Is that behavior still happening? So what I've noticed with puzzles is his skin will quiver when a fly lands on him. So hopefully he doesn't see me as a fly. I want him to want me to approach. So I wasn't exact. I mean, obviously if puzzles didn't like my approach that much, he would have backed away from me. If he backed away from me, I would have known that I am pairing myself with an aversive. So what I ended up doing, instead of me touching him, I ended up changing it and having him touch an object um, when he was ready. And it worked out beautifully. Okay, so let's see. After puzzles, we're talking about Quincy. Um, this is a video that didn't upload. But in our level one membership, somebody was talking about not being able to get their animal to move. 
Um, they're being their diets restricted right now due to ruling out allergies. And those of you that are watching in level one, go look up level one. It's right at the top right now. Their animal has restricted a diet for allergies. So she wasn't sure how to get that animal to recall. This particular animal was a domestic animal. Um, so we started talking about, I was trying to identify different food reinforcers and she's like, nope, those are out. Those are out. We can't use any of those right now. And I can't get this animal to want to, I can't <clears throat> create motivation. So I was like, do you know how to create motivation with play? This is how I taught my dog Quincy who passed away almost a year ago as I'm staring right at her picture. Um, how I used play to train a recall. And we start talking about how to, when I'm starting to use play as a recall, as Snow, my deaf and blind border collie is barking and playing with Levi, my deaf dog in the background, I will shape this. So I will shape it by standing right next to them. If play is a reinforcer, shake a toy. And then I slowly shape um, distraction recall during distraction. So I'll start with something, an item that the animal has not much attention in, but it does have its back to turn towards me. Then I'll slowly start increasing the objects in which they're distracted. Okay. So number five, this is a video uh, we are talking about in the Parrot Project, we're getting ready to start live streaming it right now in the Parrot Project. Um, and that is training for voluntary restraint. I'll train a lot of animals um, to start letting me restrain them. And I want them to feel comfortable with my restraint. And I'll start shaping different things that I'm doing while their animal is restrained. All the while, whatever restraint mechanism I have, the animal always has control over it. Um, whether that's a shoot, whether it is a towel, whether whatever, however, a crate could be restraint. Um, so we're getting ready to live stream this in the Parrot Project. Um, I have his head. So I no longer have to do this with Rico anymore. I use my hands. Yeah, history of a virgin. You get power in with um, So I think you hear me say, here, do you want to come see me? Capture the stress on yeah, Rico's face because there isn't any. Because I trained him. And you want to get the stress on his face, which there is none. None observable. So he's not trying to move. Good boy, Rico. Um, but we're getting ready to start training this and showing this in the parrot project. And I'm going to start with two birds that have a history of being forced, being cowed. They will fly from you as fast as possible. Um, they're definitely going to bite you. Boy, Rico. And you're going to start seeing me counter condition this. I'm going to show baseline what it looks like when I get the towel out, what their behavior right. looks so like. Just a tad more there you saw Rico struggle just, just a bit. And I said, let's find a place to end because I don't want to see him struggle nice again. Job, He's yeah, clearly nice showing. Job. He's ready to come out of the towel. Let's end it. Keep it going. Nice. Out of the mm -hmm. it looks like um, so I'm reinforcing with verbal phrase. Um, trying to do something tactile, trying to observe. So this is what he looks like when he's ready to do a backflip. He just started leaning, his crest went up. Um, so that's what we're getting ready to start in the Parrot Project. So when people say, can you teach an old dog new tricks? Absolutely you can. Some of the animals I work with that I don't start working with, um, that I get the opportunity to work with are 50 years old. Um, so the next thing I have on my desktop, let's see, where did we go? Rico restraint. Um, keep your animals used to change. You hear me say this all the time. Um, if I had one piece of advice to give, it would be keep your animals used to change. 
Um, so this is me with my fabulous team, Rachel in the sun, oh, sunglasses on the right, Lindsay Douglas in the back, Kendall on the left, and we are building aviaries um, for the birds at the center to get outside. To me, aviaries are a must. I have built a lot of them and I've built them for whatever locations. Um, the re There's so many reasons why aviaries are a must for the birds in my care, um, for the enrichment that it provides. And a lot of times I have to shape the behavior of the animal accepting going out into this it's the out the world is a big world, um, fresh air, wind, sun, hearing other people. Um, but the main reason, one of my main reasons is keep them used to change. Hey, Debbie, you'll see this this week. Um, keep the animals used to change and getting them in outdoor enclosures is fabulous because we have behavior issues developing that I haven't seen in years um, because they haven't had access to outdoor aviaries. And I'm so busy during the day, I'm going a million different directions. And a lot of times I'm still there at seven, eight o'clock at night because there's so many different animals that need so many different things. But if my birds are out in aviaries and then I come in at the end of a long day, they've had the opportunity to exhaust all this energy being outside, causing me to have to do less work for myself once I come in to get them um, at the end of the day. Let's see. What else do we have? What to do to do? Um, yeah. So, and if you saw my personal, <laughs> thank you. If you saw on my personal Facebook page, I started talking about, um, I like to share what I'm thinking. We can be so busy. We get tied up in our work, um, in the field of caring for anything, whether it's humans, animals, a loved one at home, it can be mentally and physically exhausting, causing us not to pay attention to ourselves. And I made a comment saying that nobody has control of us as much as we do ourselves. We control our own minds. We can control the way we think, what makes us happy, um, elim eliminating stressors in our lives. So what I was talking about was I get to surround myself daily with all these amazing creatures. And in level two, you're showing, we're showing how um, we're getting a couple different groups of wolves that were showing signs of fear of coming to the edge of the enclosure to now when they see us, they're standing waiting at the enclosure before we can get to them. So behavior doesn't lie. Um, and this is what I get to surround myself with daily and I love it and I wouldn't change it for the world. I love nothing more than helping people that want to do better. And that is what I do. It is my life's mission. And I don't think there's any way I can stop doing this because it's, it, ABA is my blood type. <laughs> that is my blood type. <laughs> Um, it's how I think it's how I control my environment because I know the power of it. And I want to say thank you to everybody that's following. Um, and I just want to say thank you to our amazing volunteers, our amazing team who's sitting at the center even now. So I can do coffee with the critters. They're sitting there and powering the hell out of the lives of my animals and I'm about ready to go out and work with some wolves and some gators and some lemurs and end my day with um, the animals I hold so close and near to me. So in ending, I just want to say, take a look at our events. We've got the two workshops coming up. Um, take a look at our memberships, level one for companion, level two for meet people wanting to dive deeper into applied behavior analysis. And we do that with 
Exotics. Um, I just uploaded a podcast, which is in level one and level two. Um, it is there waiting for you, and it's called Behavior in Context. Um, if you want to see more of what we do, uh, take a look at our day with the trainer. We've got people interested in coming in yet this fall. Take a look at our webinars. Um, take a look at our workshops for next year. And thank you guys so much. I do have to run because I've got a schedule of events happening this afternoon. I will check back on the comments later tonight when I can sit down and breathe. So thank you, everybody, and I will see you next Sunday on Coffee with the Critters. If you want to get in touch with me before then, you can message me right here on Facebook. All right. Take care, everybody. Have a great weekend.